Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to be replacing the vacuum pump in my wife's MK1 Tiguan. Uh, this is a 2011. They offered this body style between the years of 2009 and 2018. Uh, the reason you'd be replacing a vacuum pump is it's leaking oil or you might have a hard brake pedal. As far as tools, I try to use the least amount possible. I know not everybody has everything. So starting off, we have a 17 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter wrench, a quarter inch ratchet, a quarter inch four inch extension, a two inch extension, a quarter inch five millimeter Allen, a quarter inch T30, a quarter inch T25, and a three eighths T50. These two are gonna be for the lower engine shield. I did not show that in the video. Uh, if you wanna see how that's done, go ahead and watch my oil change video. Uh, quarter, I'm sorry, not a quarter inch, a mini 90 degree pick, my clip cooler, and some pliers. These ones are made specifically for the clamps, um, but you can use normal pliers to get that clamp off of the air box. And then always a flashlight. And then I use some water and degreaser at the end of the job for the residual oil, basically for the cleanup. As far as components that you'll be replacing, uh, three bolts, the gasket, and the vacuum pump itself. As always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe, help me hit that 1000 mark. Uh, leave some comments, hit the like button, you know, let, let me know what you think. As always, I appreciate you guys. So looking at the top of the engine, the vacuum pump is going to be located right here underneath the engine cover. So what you go ahead and do is just pop this up and then you just set this aside. And there it is right there. So the next step is going to be to remove the air box. So what you're going to do is disconnect this connector right here remove this plastic panel. There's three little tabs and then just set it aside. Uh, take your pocket screwdriver, hit this tab on the side right here and then go ahead and hit this one as well. And then kind of tilt it out just like that and set it aside. And then the next thing we're going to do is take a, a pair of pliers and get this clamp and then there's a a five millimeter Allen bolt right here that we'll take out. All right, so go ahead and take your pliers and put them on this clamp right here. Uh, forget about this one. I wanna do this one so that we can get the whole tubing out of the way. So just squeeze that like that and then move it to the side. And then you can just break this free right here. And then go ahead and take your five millimeter Allen. Loosen that bolt right there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab over here, lift up, and then lift up on the left side right here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to snake it around this coolant hose, just like that. All right, next thing is to remove the high pressure fuel line going to the high pressure pump. And this will be under pressure. So what you wanna do is have something to catch the fuel that falls down. I like to use pig mats and then also a rag to kind of, you know, shade my eyes. Wear some safety glasses when you're doing this cause you don't wanna get fuel in your eyes. Um, but there's gonna be a 17 millimeter banjo nut right here. And then also a brass fitting. Um, the brass fitting is a 19 and then the banjo is a 17. Sometimes the brass fitting wants to break free with it. So that's why I have both wrenches here just in case. Um, but really what you want to do is just break free this 17 right here. So pull it towards you. And of course cover your eyes. You can hear that releasing. That's the pressure. Okay, in my case, the 19 did not move, uh, but sometimes it does. So what you wanna do is uh, loosen that 17 all the way, and then make sure that you snug that 19 back up into the pump.
the snug it uh, pushing towards the back of the car and that'll snug it back up into the pump all right go ahead and remove that connector on top of the high pressure fuel pump and you know just put it underneath here and set it to the side and then there's going to be two t30s there's one right here and there's also one right here it's kind of hard to see but anyways you're going to go back and forth from this one to the top one until there's no more tension on either one of them and then at that point you can pull the high pressure fuel pump out so i'm going to go ahead and do that just pull it towards you wiggling a little bit just like that and then you can just go ahead and kind of set it up here like that uh, you might want to put a rag you know just underneath here catching the oil or fuel that drips off of it and then there's also going to be a follower that's in here so you just reach your finger in and pull it towards you, it slides out. Just like that. It can only go in one way. You see that little tab on top? That always goes towards the top when it's going back in. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna that this is disconnected there's no more vacuum so we should be able to get this off pretty easily i'll take something like this this is for clips and i'll just kind of stick it right here wiggle back and forth lightly and then also you know helping it with my hand and it just pops off like that go ahead and remove this t30 right here all it's doing is holding on this bracket that holds this line on So just looking at a couple bolts, these longer ones are for the high pressure fuel pump and this one is for that bracket that has that metal line. Last step is going to be to remove these three bolts for the vacuum pump. It's kind of hard to show it in the car, but it sits like that. So if I turn it to the side, I'll show you where they're at. There's one, two, three. And just go ahead and remove those and then I'll show you how to remove the pump itself. Alright, so looking directly at the vacuum pump, you got a bolt right here, a bolt up top, and then in the bottom back, there's a bolt right here, and it actually holds this bracket. So I just wanted you guys to see that it goes through the bracket and then through the vacuum pump so that you don't mix it up when you're going back on. Once you have all three bolts out for the vacuum pump, just go ahead and lift up a little bit right here on this hard line and then pull the vacuum pump out. You might just have to work it around the bracket. And that's it. All right, and as you can see, the gasket is still stuck to the vacuum pump. You see this blue right here? That's actually RTV that comes from the factory built onto the gasket. There's going to be a little bit of that left on the side of the engine. So what you want to do is take your pocket screwdriver and very lightly uh, scrape the rest of that off if there is any on the engine. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little bit of blue right there. So you just want to get that off and make it a clean surface. That way when you put the new gasket on, there's no leaks. 
So you got some right there to the right side. And then usually there's some right there on the left side. And also you see this, uh, this slit in the middle of the camshaft right here. When you're putting the new vacuum pump on, you have to match that up with that little keyway right there. Next thing I'll do is I'll put them side by side and those tabs I was talking about, I'll line this one up to match. That way when I put it on, uh, hopefully it goes on pretty easy. And then I'll go ahead and take the gasket. And if you look at the gasket on the black side of it, it has tabs right here. I don't know if you guys can see them. But anyways, those tabs are used to snap down inside these holes right here. And what that does is it just holds it on there better when you're putting the pump on. All right, so I've got my pump, the gasket, and the three new bolts. I'll just set these aside for a second. And then I've also got the mating surface right here on the engine cleaned up. And then I'll just go ahead and feed it back in. All right, and when it goes on, it'll look something like this, and then it'll match up and just line up. So once you do that, go ahead and get this bracket in place. Go ahead and put one of your bolts in. And I just like to start it by hand. And take another one. Get that top one in. last one all right go ahead and tighten those up it doesn't take a lot it's just pretty snug You don't want to get too much because you'll strip it out and then you have to replace uh, technically the engine, or not the engine, but the cylinder head because this cam cradle is part of the cylinder head. All right, that's pretty tight. And then I'll go ahead and throw this back on just like that. Go ahead and take your follower before you forget. The tab goes upward. And then just very gently slide it down in there. And that's it. Grab the shorter of the three bolts that we talked about earlier. And then go ahead and line up that bracket again. And then throw that bolt right there and tighten it up. Go ahead and line the high pressure fuel pump back up. All right, it was kind of hard to do with the camera in my hand, but what I had to do was push down on this line a little bit so that I could get the fitting back in the brass fitting. And then once I did that, you know, the holes up top right here and right here lined up. So now I'll take my screws and I'll throw one in right here and right here, and then I'll go back and forth tightening them up. And what that'll do is it'll pull it in. And then after that, you just slide this nut upward and then get it onto the brass fitting all the way until you can't finger tight anymore. And then you'll take your 17 millimeter wrench and you'll push it towards the back of the car and tighten that up. All right, so I'm snugging up that 17 millimeter. And 
once you do that, go ahead and take your connector, feed it back under, reconnect it. And then this vacuum line right here that we disconnected, I'll take a little bit of grease and put it on this part right here and then slide it right back in there. And then after that, um, before I put the air box back in, I'll just take some all-purpose degreaser and I'll spray it down in there as best I can, get all that oil off of the rubber hoses because that oil will actually eat the rubber hoses. Uh, it'll make them swell up. So I'll spray that and then I'll hit it with some water. I'll also remove the lower engine shield um, and then I'll clean it from the bottom as well. And then after that, put the engine shield back on and then put my air box back in and the job is pretty much done. So the next step, I'll show you how to put the air box back in. So looking at the air box on the bottom, there's actually a water drain right here. And where that's gonna go once the air box is installed correctly, is it, it's just gonna dangle right here. All right, so taking the air box, we're just gonna take this part right here and you're gonna feed it underneath this coolant line. And then it's just kind of a twisting motion. You just wanna flip it over like that. And then next you wanna worry about this drain right here. Just put it right where I told you to put it. And then this grommet should line up pretty easily. Next you wanna take this hose, get it in place. And then you're just gonna push down on the air box and this grommet will snap in place. And then this one should be in place as well. Just kinda of get the bolt lined up. And then go ahead and tighten it down. Reconnect your connector for the mass airflow sensor. Take your pliers for this clamp. I try to make sure that the clamp is up top. And then go ahead and take this piece. There's two tabs on the bottom and then there's holes on this front piece. And then snap it towards the front. And then this thing right here has a couple little fingers that they just go into the slots. Get them in their place. Take this top cover and snap it into place. Sometimes these fingers don't want to hold too well. I mean, they are plastic, um, but just do it the best you can. If it doesn't want to snap at all, you might need a new one because these break sometimes. Um, other than that, you know, you just have your top engine cover and, and that's it. So once you start the car, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at the high pressure fuel line right there and make sure it's not leaking. If it's leaking, turn the car off, you know, tighten that back up and then start the car again and then recheck for a leak there again and then recheck for oil leaks around the vacuum pump. If there are no leaks, it's a job well done. As always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Help me hit that 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 subscribers. Like, share, comment, you know, let me know what you think. I appreciate it, you guys. Peace.